Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. We've got a great unboxing episode today, but unfortunately, I purchased these guitars on rather sad terms. About a year ago, a viewer of the show reached out to me to ask for help of getting a guitar from Japan to the US. And I was able to help him, and that model ended up becoming very rare and valuable simply because Gibson didn't make all of them. However, unfortunately, he just passed away a few months ago, and his family is liquidating his collection, so they asked me if I'd be interested in any of them. And it was funny because that guitar that I was just talking about, I was watching that video one day before they had sent that, and I was like, you know, I would kind of like that guitar back for my personal collection. And then there was that email. Call it fate, call it whatever you will. I think he would be happy knowing that his collection ended up coming to me. So let's have a moment of silence for our fellow troglodyte. I was able to help them out. I sent them shipping boxes. I sent them way too much bubble wrap just so everything would get here securely. But let's go ahead and check out what was in his collection here. Our first one is actually going to be some sort of a Les Paul reissue that they didn't know what this was. I was kind of like, is that a artist model or is it something that somebody has modified? So let's go ahead and open this thing up and see it for the first time. So. Somebody must have been a fan of Gary Moore because that's exactly what we have here. Grover tuners and all. So look at the top on this thing. That is beautiful. It's got definitely a lot of binding bleed on this example. And hey, look at this thing. I guess he wanted to not get a whole bunch of buckle scratches on it. So we've got this. I'm not sure. Is that going to come off? Yes, it is. And it doesn't appear to have left too much of a residue. Like, now you can see there's definitely an unevenness in the way that the finish is aged. Like, do you see how this one's more orange, whereas the rest is kind of red? I'm sure once I polish that up a bit, it won't be as noticeable. But look at that back. That is gorgeous. So, somebody has flipped around our neck pickup. And judging by our serial number, this is an R8. But they've put Grovers on here, which means they had to ream out the headstock because it probably would have had historic style Clusens. But, eh. You know, if you like Greeny and Gary Moore and you don't want to buy the new reissue that's coming eventually, that's been leaked, I mean, this would be a great one. And when I was talking to the son about this, he had said, yeah, he was a big Gary Moore fan, so it wouldn't surprise him if he did these modifications to this one. So that's a nice lemon burst top. It's got a nice chunky neck. I mean, that rosewood fretboard is extra rosy on this one. Like, it's got some dark spots and then it's got some light spots. So that is a very nice looking one here. I bet there's probably some modifications in here to give you like an out of phase tone. I'm not sure if you actually flip the magnets in here or not. I guess we'll have to see. But it does appear that we do have a COA in here. I'm thinking it's a 2013 by this serial number. So right when they started to use hide glue for everything. So that is a desirable year. And we got some other case candy. And it feels like you should be able to reuse this. So I'll go ahead and include it there but it's called scratch pad. My thing with those is sure you protect it from scratches, but you can't protect it from like the way that's going to react to the finish. Now that I think about it, it's probably more so a reaction to the finish rather than uneven aging. But that was a sweet first one. What else do we have in his collection? This one feels pretty heavy. I wonder if this is the guitar that I'm looking for. We'll have to find out here. If you're curious uh, what boxes I sent them, it was that Stumac shipping system that I talked about in this episode here. Because the son lived in like Texas and all the guitars were with his mom in Florida. So I figure if somebody who's not really super familiar with shipping stuff is the one that's in charge of this, I might as well make it as easy as humanly possible here. Now it looks like there's some extra goodies with this one. So we'll have to take this out and see what is inside this case. This was another one of those ones I was not 100% sure what it was. Because you gotta remember, I bought these essentially sight unseen. Like, I saw like two or three photos of each. I didn't want to get, you know, too nitpicky. Yeah, what's your serial number? Blah, 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 blah. I could already tell this was likely like a mid to late 90s standard, but who knows? It could be something a little bit more. Inside this beautiful 90s Les Paul case is a natural bird's eye Les Paul. Now, I do know there was a run of these in the early 90s, and then you can also find some of these runs in the late 90s. So, bird's eye. Sometimes it's got some quiltiness to it and flame, other times not. This one, it's got a nice in-between top. It's got some plain, it's got some quilt, it's got a little bit of flame. If you like bird's eye, this is something for you. 
Now it looks to me what has happened to this one is somebody has replaced our pickups because it doesn't have any gold at all. And I'm starting to think maybe those are the pickups that we had unboxed on the side there that we still have to look at. But as far as our headstock, that's looking pretty good. These were relatively well kept I and mean, they're a little bit dusty, but not too bad. But yes, this is a 1993. Hey, I wasn't too bad on that. Thankfully, it doesn't look like any brakes, cracks, or repairs. And oh, Scratch Pad Pro on this one too. I wonder if they all have that. This one, that's not too bad. Basically, it was covering up the previous scratches that another owner had did. So once I polish that up, I don't think you'd really be able to tell on that. But that's a cool 93 Les Paul Standard. Let's see, what do we got in here? Ooh, wow whole bunch of case candy that's nice looks like we've got an original receipt for 900 bucks back in 93 got a pre-packed checklist showing that it was sold in early 1994 oh that's nice you don't see this version very often even a gibson strings thing oh i don't think i've ever seen that case candy not quite sure what it's for it almost looks like postage stamps and then for some reason there's a plain blank black cover I highly doubt the started life is all black, but hey, it's in there. As far as replace parts, besides the pickups, it looks like he swapped out our rhythm treble thing, but that actually looks pretty good. I would love to have a pick guard just like that on here. And of course we have our toggle switch tip there too. So let's go ahead and see what we might have in here. I wonder if these were with the guitar or just freebies that they sent me because I didn't know what to do with, because these are looking like a plain cover and then a burst bucker three from 2015 that doesn't really fit with this guitar but i'm sure it fits with one of them then in this one looks like the counterpart except for it's a seymour duncan uh 12b i'm not quite sure what model that is oh i guess it says right here the george lynch screaming demon and one more bonus here Ooh, 57 classic now that could be original but the fact that it's a uh four conductor tells me no so those are just added on Now let's come over here and check out guitar number three. I mean, it's nice just unboxing a lot of high quality instruments. Like he definitely had quite a nice collection. Like some guys are pretty eclectic with their collections. Other time they're pretty basic. I mean, I would say this is a basic collection, but he collected very nice examples of each. All right, so this was the guitar. This is the guitar that Gibson gave up on and history is 100% set on this. Returning home today, and for the final time, I don't think I'm going to sell this guitar. I'm going to keep it back within my collection because this is probably the most expensive Gibson USA Les Paul on the used market today. Like, there's a few that rival it very closely, but inside here is the 125th anniversary Les Paul Supreme. Now, as I was telling you earlier, I've already reviewed and demoed this exact guitar, and now it's coming back to me. So you can learn all about it right here. And we had just reviewed a regular Supreme not too long ago. But I mean, what makes a Supreme a Supreme is they're absolutely gorgeous. They've got flamed backs that are carved, flame tops, they're all chambered out. But the 125th anniversary, they were supposed to make 125 of these. But so far, we've never seen serial number. I think it's past 28. I mean, check out that video for a little bit more information. But what's cool about this one is it's got the quilty neck on top of it. So it appears to be in... You know, pretty much the exact same shape that I sent it out. A few handprints on here. Thankfully, he did not put one of those scratch cards on this guy. Because this is just one of the tightly quilted top ones. But I've always personally really liked the back on this one. There's a reason I used it in the thumbnail of that episode. Despite these things, I think they were like $4,000 brand new. I think he had paid me $4,800 with my importing fee and all that stuff, but that was back when it was a gamble, right? We didn't know if Gibson was going to continue to produce these things. But now, a year later, we've only ever seen one additional one show up on the used market. And it was actually sold by the Gibson Garage. So I think that one was within Mark Agnesi's office collection that they had sold off. And then that got flipped on Reverb real quick. And it sold for the same amount as I sold my last one for. So yeah, it's officially in the books. This is a very expensive Gibson USA. Simply because of the story behind it, you know. Henry J era ends. The curly era begins. They didn't want to finish producing them, apparently. So far, we have not actually seen a Curly Era Les Paul Supreme. 
Although I highly hope that we do see them, but maybe when they return next time, they could be custom shops. That would make me happy. I mean, heck, these are custom shop cases. All right, we still got two left after all this. I mean, I'm all just happy with those three. <laughs> There's actually one Fender in here too. This does not feel like the Fender though. This will be some sort of other Gibson that I kind of forget what might even be in here. But let's go ahead and get it out to find out. Oh yes, I remember what's in here now. I've actually had one of these before. We unboxed it on the show. However, I did not review it because somebody was like, hey, I want to buy that guitar from you. So for this one right here, here's what I'm thinking. I'm going to show it to you just that much. Don't worry, guys. We'll do this one tomorrow, though. So make sure you stay tuned, like, comment, and subscribe. Be ready for all that. Should be around 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, if not very closely after that. But we do still have one more guitar that I will show you guys today. Unless I decide to be evil and do it again and save this for a Fender Friday. <laughs> this was the one guitar in their collection that... No, I'm a Gibson guy, right? I know the market in and out for all that stuff, so I was able to pay them very fair prices for someone who's buying essentially for resale on them anyways, you know? I can't pay him top market value, but I think I did pretty nice for him. But this was the one I was like, you know, you'd probably be better off selling it to someone else because I don't deal with fenders too often. But I told them I would pay this much. And to be honest, they seem pretty happy with it. So I'm hoping I didn't offer them too much. Like I, I've dealt with some custom shop fenders, so I know the general gist of things on the older ones, generally two to 3,000. I mean, there's some limited editions that can fetch a little bit more than that. But let's go ahead and see what is inside this beautiful case. Like it's extra beautiful. I like this like tanned leather look that they've got going on here. If I remember the COA correctly, it's from 1996. So what early custom shop do we have in here? It had a sticker on the pick guard, and I was confused if that was original or not. I can already see we've got a bird's eye maple neck on this thing. So that kind of reminds me of the copper caster that I have that we did the Trade Tuesday thing on. Here's the big reveal. Oh yeah, that's nice. We've got the custom shop right there. It's not a limited edition of any sort. Looks like serial number CN506618. I'll probably have to do some research on that. There was a COA in here. Let's see if that even matches. So it looks like all our usual case candy in here. Strap, arm, polishing cloth, cable, all that good stuff. And right here says February 1996, 1960 Stratocaster. Okay, so that appears to match up. So it's probably a late 1995, but I actually left the door in 96. So unless one of you guys recognizes this sticker as something limited edition <laughs> or something, I'm probably just going to take that off. I mean, worst case scenario, you can replace a pick guard if there is a little bit of a sticker shadow. But yeah, kind of reminds me of a Stevie Ray Vaughan Stratocaster. It's got that three-tone sunburst going on. Appears to be in pretty good shape. Probably could use tuned up, but <laughs> other than that, I don't know if I'll do a full review and demo on this. I guess I'll leave it up to you guys. If this video can get 10,000 likes within two days, that's 48 hours from the date of posting, I'll do a Fender Friday on it. Otherwise, we'll just see it get relisted in my shop. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed checking out these guitars with me. You'll see the other one in a day or two, but don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.